All right, video number three. You are looking at the problem. This is check it out number one that I'm about to do on my graph paper. Actually, I've already done it on my graph paper. But I'm going to be reading you the problem while you are able to try to look at this a little bit. So what I've done is I have written the points that the problem told me, which are right here, to build my triangle. And I have gotten my graph paper ready, and I have drawn the big triangle, which is SRT, using those points. Now, the problem asked me to label M as the midpoint right here of RT, so M, and it asked me to label N as the midpoint of ST. Well, I could not do that until I found the midpoint of each of those lines. So, I have my midpoint formula. I showed you the midpoint formula in the last video. Hopefully you have it written out to the side in your book now. If not, you can go back and do that. But I have filled in the blanks on the midpoint formula for the first set of lines, or for the first line. And I have gotten my midpoint one and one. You can tell I've graphed that right there. I then did the same thing with the midpoint for ST. Found that the midpoint is three and four. I graphed it right there, and now I have not only my midpoints, but I have my mid-segment connecting. So if you're struggling with this, write down those formulas, plug in numbers, and practice until you're comfortable using this. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is we want to find out if, in fact, MN is parallel to RS. Do you remember what we need to do to find out if two lines are parallel? We always have to find their slope and see if the slope is the same. That's something you learned just a little while ago, and that is super important for you to hang on to. Parallel lines always have the same slope. So let's use our slope formula and check that. Coming over here and looking at our slope formula, and actually here you can see all three of these formulas. So if you want to pause the video right here and write them in your book, that would be great. But we need slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So starting with line SR, which is the bottom line in the triangle, we will come to line the slope for SR. And I plugged in y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. I found that the slope is 3 halves. I then did the same thing for the slope of MN. As you can see here, I plugged in this set of coordinates and this set of coordinates. So my y2 minus y1 would be 1 minus 4 over 1 minus 3 for x2 minus x1. And that's exactly what you see right here. And we find that our slope is also 3 halves. So yes, these two lines, the mid-segment and the base of the triangle below it, they are in fact parallel. And the last thing that the problem asks us to do, I'll show you, is show that MN is equal to half of RS. Is MN equal to half of RS? Well, it should be according to the theorem that we're about to learn, but we are only gonna know if we solve it mathematically. So we're gonna use our distance formula. That's the only way to calculate the length of these two lines. So on this side of the page, I have, let me pull it up so you can see better. I have the distance formula, and I'm finding the distance for SR. I plug in my X's and Y's. I make sure I work carefully with my negatives. So negative, negative means positive. I square that number. I square this number. I add them, and I end up with the square root of 2 radical 13. Let's walk through that really quickly. So my points were, this is RS or SR, let me see which direction I went in with them. So I said for my x1, I said negative 7. For my x2, I said negative 3. So I have 7 minus negative 3 squared. That's going to be negative 4 squared, which is going to be positive 16. I did then did the same thing with my y's. That comes out to be negative 6 squared, which is positive 36. 16 plus 36 is 52. Now for a quick review, when we need to simplify radicals or square roots, we need to find if there is a perfect square in here, something that can become a number without a square root sign over it. So 4 times 13 equals 52, and 4 is a, square, a perfect square. 
So I can turn that square root of 4 into a 2, and the radical 13 cannot be simplified anymore, so it stays radical 13. If you're struggling with that, that would be a good thing to use your resources in the video section, I believe, of your book. Um, if you go to the videos, I think you have, oh, if you go to the parent videos, that's what it is. I think there's an option for algebra review. You could also Google this, and that could give you a quick review. All right, so I then did the same thing. I did the, um, where is it? I'm trying to find that. Oh, the distance of, mid, of the mid-segment, which is N, M, right there in the middle. We've got to find how long it is now. And when we do the same work, we find out that it is radical 13. Now remember, we treat this like comparing variables. So 2x would actually be twice as big as x, or in this case, 2 radical 13 is twice as big as 13. So yes, mn does equal half of rs. All right, so that's the end of that. Y'all are welcome to watch that one more than once and make sure that you understand it. And pause the video where necessary. Plug in... Um, those coordinates were necessary so that you're seeing the math work. And on the next video, we'll do the triangle mid-segment theorem.